Oh, hello. Welcome to my Halloween special. Today, I am Inspector Nelby Pop. And I was just thinking about where exactly should I be storing my memorabilia? If you're wondering where all my kitschy items are and all the things like stuffed toys that I never got rid of, they all ended up here. And I'm gonna tell you about it. So I'm gonna be using this crane machine, which I have purchased. It's, it's Pink Panther and I dressed up as the inspector because of a Halloween theme and also very in line with who I am, which is like teaching you about like being able to organize your life. So these clear balls kind of reflect, you know, if you've ever seen Inside Out where there are memories stored in these little circular balls, this is exactly how it is. Storing my memories in here and kind of reliving it. And I'm gonna be doing that today with you in this channel. So this is how I organize my kitschy items but Halloween edition. I'm eventually going to change this Pink Panther version to just like a normal black or beige tone because I am like that. My soul is black. But for now, you will see it in its original form, which is a Pink Panther, and here to remember it in video form. Here we go. For those of you who are on my channel know that I have been endorsing Skillshare for over a year now, and I just love Skillshare because it's an online platform that allows you to have access to thousands of videos created by professionals in design, art, business. I definitely have learned a lot of skills that maybe other professionals are skilled at. I've definitely learned a lot from them and have been able to apply it when teaching different students. Uh, these are skills that you can learn anybody at all levels. They have videos for beginners and these are actually curated videos. So you don't need to worry about kind of filtering and finding the right video for you. A lot of them are structured, organized by topic and also there's a whole lesson plan that you can follow. It's a great application and I highly recommend that you try it. So click and sign up. So um, I'm just going to try to catch six different items in here and we'll talk about each memory through that. So let's go. Okay, I'm trying to catch this. Yeah! You know what the trick is? It's really like, it does this little like thing where, never mind, I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, so we have managed to put it down here. I'm never gonna catch one memory at this rate. Let's just start with another thing. This is not exactly how we planned it. Whatever. I got one! All right, that's the memory sound. Yes! This actually was in my couch. If you've seen a lot of my videos, this was here, but I thought that my cats were gonna eventually ruin it if I kept it there. And I wanna preserve this because, you know, I'm a huge fan of Studio Ghibli. I love their animations. Just the storytelling is excellent, the way they create their characters. I wanted to stop getting cat hair on it. So this one is the cat bus, which is in the story, My Neighbor Totoro. And it's really cool. So that is something that I've kept. Um, I purchased when I was in Japan with my boyfriend when we went there together. We went to the Totoro Museum. It was a really cool small museum. And if you are a fan of the animation, I definitely recommend you go there. All right, I'm about to catch this. So, as you can see, there are a couple of stuffed toys in there that look like animals. There's like a little Shakespeare person in there. But this is, these are puppets. And I have kept these because I feel like I'm gonna use them in the future. All my friends are getting pregnant. So, you know, if ever I want to be the coolest tita ever, then I can bring these along. For those of you who don't know, I graduated with an early education degree along with a fine arts bachelor's degree. So I am a certified preschool teacher 
and then I decided to teach high school a year after I decided to learn all about early education. I, I basically taught in some preschools in Canada. These are one of the puppets that I used to bring around. This is the second favorite puppet. The first favorite one is that parrot at the back. And with three to five year olds, whenever I used to tell them stories, it was super fun when I would bring around a puppet because they would just look at the puppet. You know, like even if I were talking, they would think that the puppet was talking. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. And then you would like make reactions like, oh no, yay. Yeah, and then you sometimes like hide behind it, but um, sometimes when I would read a book or I would want to like get them to do something, I would bring out my puppet and then they would do the talking for me. That's it. All right, we're gonna catch this bear because you know, we wanna, if we wanna get six within this day, we better get the ones that are easy. Yay! So this is a Beanie Baby. For those of you who lived in the 90s, you probably know what a Beanie Baby is. So Beanie Babies were like really popular toy back then. It's like the, the Shopkins, the Bratz, Barbie, whatever, Gen Z Barbie. This was the It toy. Every Beanie Baby came with like a little tag. I lost this one, but I have most of the tags for all my other ones and they came with names and you would collect these. The Beanie Babies back then were like, are like the pop toys collectibles now. Um, I'll show you a picture so you get what I'm talking about. I'm gonna try to catch this one just so that I could use it as an example. Two thousand years later. All right, so each Beanie Baby came with this little like tag, um, but you'd have to take it out if you had a kid, but this is what made it collectible if you kept this tag. And it would give like the name of the animal and then also the date of birth. The Beanie Baby collection. I don't know who owns it. It probably is like, it could be worth a lot at this point. So that's my Beanie Baby memory. So now we have three more memories left. And I just thought that since we got a lot of the stuffed toys out of the way, we're gonna go for the memory balls. <laughs> Let's hope that we can catch it. Oh. I'm surprised because the first time we did that, we did like how many tries and we, we just gave up on it. So I used to have a hobby in the past and it's to make like beaded ballerinas, animals. My mom gave me a book and like these beads. These are the beads and there are skills in which you can create different creatures with them. And I used to be obsessed with doing it because I thought it was cool. But the first time I ever did it, it was hard to follow the instructions. One, because I was in middle school and like, I was a bit challenged. And then two, it was just like really complex in terms of like tying it and then changing how many you put into the hole. Back then we didn't have videos, so you really couldn't follow. You were just literally following whatever it said on the book. It was also in Chinese and I'm illiterate, but you had the pictures and I was just looking at it, looking at the images. So that's why I'm a very image-based person, I feel. I think um, because of that type of training I got at a young age. To pass time, I used to make these. My mom used to let me do these because it was like good for my brain or something. Because my mom was like really worried that I was gonna be dumb in the future. I wasn't the smartest, okay? Let's just put it that way. So these, this was the first ballerina I ever made. You can tell that like it's already falling apart. I even added the hook and um, it's not the best. And this was the second version I did. So this is a big improvement. You can see like their cuts because I didn't do it properly. This one I never threw away because it's just a reminder of perseverance and a moment of what resilience looks like. I never gave up and I kind of just pushed forward. So every time it just reminds me of that things are always possible if you try different ways. So yeah, cool trip down memory lane. I'm gonna catch the next thing. See if it's even possible at this time because it's just like stuck. Let's to hope. <laughs> Low. It comes with music, but it gets really annoying, so I just turned it off. <gasps> False hope. 
You know, like it's it. There's like a tool that you can just like shake and you can't shake it, but it catches it and then it drops it a bit. That's how they get your money. So. <laughs> it's not that easy. It was just not how I envisioned it, but we did it. Okay, here we go. Okay, anyone want to guess what this is? I'll give you five seconds. All right, this is actually a really gross memory. For those of you who are not a fan of gross stuff, then you can skip to blank. And for those of you who don't really care and are not eating, then you can proceed. Okay, so this is a memory of getting my teeth pulled. So I have all my teeth in here. Any teeth that I have ever pulled in my life is in here and my retainers. For those of you who didn't know, I used to have braces and then I got retainers and then I also had to pull a lot of my teeth. And the reason being is that my baby teeth until middle school, until I was like 15 years old, would just never come out. I even got my period like super late when I was in high school already and when everyone else got it already and they were already struggling, like, you know, when they had to go swimming. I was the only one that could not relate because I just didn't mature. I was still short. Um, people made fun of me because I look like a child and I, people still do make fun of me because I look like a child. Now, I had to get like four to five teeth pulled out, the back, the front, just to make way for braces because I had like vampire teeth back then. I'll show a picture. And like two of these teeth that like fell, I guess, couldn't grow in because I still had baby teeth there. So it kind of stuck out. These are all my teeth. Even my wisdom teeth, I put it in here. So you can see baby teeth in here as well. And they are in okay condition. And my retainers are in here, but we won't show you that part. Yeah, so I got braces for like two years and then now my teeth are nice. I like to think. I struggled a lot like growing up because I wasn't like everybody else in the sense that like I didn't grow at the pace that a normal girl would. Like I got my period super late. You say the term late bloomer. I was super short. And then eventually like, oh, like in a span of a year, all of that changed. After I got my period, I grew way taller, exceeded all the people that used to make fun of me in terms of height. Look who's laughing, no joking. Just reminds me of how many teeth I had to pull. Okay, last memory. Okay, I'm trying to get this one because it seems like it'd be the easiest to get. But we'll see. Oh, I just thought this would be also really cool to share some like personal stories about my past in a cool way. Of course, I bought a, a claw machine. Who really does that? Now I get to practice unlimited for free. This is the last memory. We could add like smoke machine. Okay. This is actually a high school memory. If you didn't know, I am teaching now in the school that I used to go to all the way from kindergarten, all the way to high school. Anyways, these are baller bands. Did you ever know about the Live Strong baller bands? The yellow one, that was a false hope. He had created these baller bands that like talked about like perseverance and then you find out that the cyclist actually took drugs. That's why he could actually cycle for so long. So this is my high school memory. So we used to have like these events called Battle of the Bearcats. Every year we would get one for our batch. So this was my 10th grade one. This was my senior one. This was my junior year one. So I was a class of 2009. We used to have like an intergrade competition where it was like an Olympic type of game for each batch to see who's the best in. It could be anything, like you could play Dota, you do a fashion show, you just cake decorating. So there are these competitions that you spend the entire day of school. It was like a sports day, but it was a competition between batches. Everyone had like a cheer, it was super cool. Then I have just a couple more baller bands from like, from different shows. This was one of the medals we won. And for those of you who don't know, I used to dance and we had this dance competition and it was one of the biggest events during that day. And 
we want gold. I mean, you're competing against three other people, so. But it was like a big moment for us. When you are in high school, you're living in this bubble and everything is about your life in high school. And you don't realize how big the world is until you get out there. This was my class ring. It's not in the best condition, but it's pretty cool. This is my master degree pin. I graduated with a master's. These are more baller bands from different events at the school. So something a student gave to me and then some pins from different events I attended at school. That is my memory. There are a ton more in here. Actually, a lot of the balls are filled with erasers. And in fact, I'm willing to give those away. I used to be a fan of collecting erasers just like because of the way they were made. They're so nice. Um, I'm willing to catch a couple and give a couple of them out to people that like watching my videos. For those of you who want to have their own little memory ball or little collection. I actually also sell like a smaller version of this. You could do that as well. I can link the person that I bought this from and their different games that she owns, but I picked the crane game. That is it, this is my memory. And let me know in the comment section down below if you wanna see more of these memories, if you want me to redo it. And that is it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Happy Halloween, everybody.